Hello, welcome to my GoTutoring YouTube channel and today I'm going to give a quick lecture on one of the most common mistakes in corner patterns that I see in all double digit and single digit Q games. Specifically, that is the kick diagonal attachment without a pincer in place. What do I mean by that? Well, I set up a few stones here. Okay. So in this case, many players who play at the Q level will make this diagonal attachment. This is what we call a kick. Now we're told when we kick, we stand up, so white will draw his stones up. And now black makes this extension. Now this is a mistake. It feels really great for many Q players and it seems intuitive because suddenly black has, you know, quote unquote, defended that upper right corner. And it's still black's move. So black can continue on with his business and go approach white's formations. However, we really have to evaluate whether or not this exchange A for B is warranted and when it's warranted. So if white makes the mistake of coming within this formation, now there's the pre-placed pincer that I mentioned in the beginning of this video. There already is a stone in the middle of where white would want his extension. So now it's a brilliant time to make this move. Now, in this case, white has a very cramped group that will become a burden, and he has to draw it out very heavily, and black can develop on both sides of that white group as he attacks it. That's when it's appropriate to use the kick. It's inappropriate to use when there's not a pincer around A, either one space nearer or it could be high, it could be on the fourth line, it could be on the third line. But without a stone there, the exchange for A for B actually helps white quite a bit more. Let's do an analysis where we change the move order. If we make the moves like this, we have to ask, if black wants to defend his corner, wouldn't it be better to defend it at A? Not now, but later in the game. Or he has the option of invading white at B and trying to create a separation in white stones. He would rarely play the move C, though. That would just seem to help white in this instance. Now, the big thing that many Q players miss is that When we do this, we really help white protect his own invasion point. There's not really an invasion point at R12 that's available anymore. And black still has an invasion point in the corner. And this is very important to demonstrate. So I'm not going to go over every variation. I'm going to invite you over to my Patreon page where I'll go over exhaustively every variation of what happens when white invades the corner at the 3-3. But let me just demo a few of them out. We can remove some of the other stones off the board because I don't want to um, complicate this situation by having whole board considerations. Let's just take for example what happens when white takes the corner. We have to think about when we make this invasion. We shouldn't make it too early in the game because normally it will damage the outside stones. So when white makes this invasion Black has a couple options. We could consider all the moves A through E here. Let's start with E. That one's the very simplest. If black makes E, white would happily connect under here. 
So even though black seems to keep the corner, white would take some side territory and remain with the sente, with the initiative. Furthermore, white has this move in the end game. So black doesn't even truly keep the corner. Sometimes you might see something like this. Now, of course, black can't just lose the S16 stone, so he'll play like this. Even this is a pretty big success for white because white has taken a big bite out of black's corner, and importantly, it's all happened for free because it's still white's initiative to move anywhere else on the board. So, if when you play the R17 invasion, your opponent plays this move, you should be very pleased. You get to take away the corner as much as you'd like in Retain the Sente. This is probably one of the most common answers to just descend down. And really, white has two simple options. A is most common. B would also work. If we move here at A, if black protects against the peep, well, there's not much that um, black can do to keep white from living in the corner. If black really wants to take the corner, he can make a move like this. White would have to defend from the double Atari, and black can take the corner back, but you see white would make a very happy position along the upper side. So that would be a success for white. If black makes this move, white can't afford to give the Ataris, and he would end up losing the corner like so. So white would do this, and actually white's already alive in the upper right corner. There's nothing black can do to kill those stones. So white would have a success here. So white would live happily like this. With a descending move, white can play this, and there's not too much black can do to prevent life here either. If he plays this, well, we get the same variation that we just received. And he can't really afford to cut too much. If he cuts, well, white will make breakthrough right here. And if he cuts this side, again, white's really happy, and he can still break through and make a position on the top side as well. So this is pretty common. The only other one I'm going to show today, really, is with this move. This is one of the ones that really tricked me out a lot when I was a single digit and double digit Q. This one is a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to show that this is the special move that really creates life here. If black tries to block you off from moving on the side, you have to make one other very special move. This one here. So in this way, you're aiming at making life here at A. So of course, black's going to block you from A, and you play this. And believe it or not, this is already alive with two eyes. If black tries to steal your eye, you still have the eye at the 1-1 one, one point. Now don't make this mistake. This is a common double-digit mistake and single-digit Q mistake. Now white would die. Here, white has to play like this. And now you can see that black has a problem. You can see that black's group only has three liberties and is not going to get any more liberties. White's group has four liberties, and cannot be atari from R18 yet, so black is going to crumble in this race. So,
this group here is already alive. Now, the other option black would have would be to play here. And in this way, white still can live. Now, if black plays something like this, you have to be careful not to get too greedy and do this, because then you will lose your corner. So if this happens, white's alive here. He has the straight four, which is already alive with two eyes. So if you have a straight four in the corner, it's alive with two eyes. So these are the variations that I wanted to show today. Just the simple ways that we can invade the corner. Um, if you want to see every variation, I'll make a longer video and I'll put it on my Patreon page. And I hope this shows why the kick is not actually as beneficial as it seems. I think many double-digit Q players think that kicking and then making the extension defends the corner and makes the corner bigger. But really what it does is it helps your opponent make their invasion point protected and it still leaves the corner vulnerable. So if you can, the way to avoid making these types of mistakes is simply when someone approaches you, don't make the kick. Just make the extension. And your opponent can also make their extension. And then you can look for future opportunities in the game. You can exploit their invasion point at A, or you can make a bigger defense of your corner at B. Now, white may still try to invade you at C, but that's okay. That invasion is difficult to protect with the kick directly anyway. Now, there are times to just in conclusion, there are times when this is already done. This will defend the corner, but of course, we don't want to play this really early in the game. It just loses the initiative, and the corner is not that big for losing the initiative early in the game. But if you have this shape later in the game, white's already safe, and you want to defend your corner, then that time the kick and then Hane under on the second line here at B14 solves the problem. So I think that covers everything about the kick today. Sometimes you'll see players play this as well from the 3-4 point. I mean, this also happens. Now, in this case, the 3-4 point is really low, and even though the invasion is not quite there, there's not much in the corner here, and white has a better position along the side. His invasion is fixed, and black's corner is not so big, so... Also, avoid the kick from the 3-4 point as well. All right. Thanks for tuning in to this short lecture, and I hope you'll check out my Patreon page where there's going to be an extensive lecture on this topic. Thanks.